What is up guys? Welcome back to another UFC prediction video. And in this video, I'm gonna be giving my prediction for the main event, Corey Sanhagen versus Umar Nurmagomedov taking place this weekend at UFC Abu Dhabi. And pretty good card overall, for sure. I mean, we got Jai Herbert versus Bedoya. We got Guram versus Vucinic making his debut. We got Shamil the Blob Gaziev. Shamil the Meal Deal, of course, one of the best heavyweights on the planet, an absolute engulfer. You know, we got uh, Alonzo Minifield versus Mirzakhanov, Alvarez versus Brenner, Tony Ferguson versus Michael Chiesa. Hopefully, Tony Ferguson can break his seven-fight losing streak and get a win here in what will most likely be his last UFC fight. God of War, Figgy, Davidson Figueredo versus Marlon Chito Vera, Shara Bullet versus Mikel Olaseshek, and of course, in the main event, Corey Sandman Sandhagen taking on Umar Nurmagomedov. Now, this fight is very intriguing to me. Umar Nurmagomedov, of course, coming from that legendary lineage of Khabib, Islam Makhachev. Of course, not all of these Dagestani guys are at that level, like we saw with Ikram Alaskarov taking on Robert Whittaker. The experience, the veteran, prevailed there. Robert Whittaker getting a very impressive first round KO. But it really does seem that all of these guys that are really close to Khabib and his father and that trained with them ever since they were born at a very young age, they are at a different level. Islam, of course, Umar Nurmagomedov fights very similar to Islam Makachev and they are both, you know, following in Khabib's footsteps of being, you know, incredible contenders going damn near undefeated and Islam Makachev becoming a dominant champion and Umar is looking to replicate that success as well. But Corey Sanhagen is a very difficult stylistic matchup for him, in my opinion. And this fight was supposed to take place last year. Umar Nurmagomedov had to pull out. I believe it was a shoulder injury that prevented him from competing last August. Corey took on Rob Font, and he put on a very dominant performance. It was a 49-46, I believe. It was a lackluster fight. Corey had to lean on the wrestling a lot because he did tear his tricep in that first round, which hindered his striking greatly, but he still showed levels and showed that he was able to get the grappling going, winning comfortably that way. Looking back on it in hindsight, it's probably good for Corey that he was fighting Rob Font that night instead of Umar, because if he had gotten injured fighting Umar, might not have gone good for him. But I'm much more confident in his chances of winning here now that he's been able to recover, has had an entire year to game plan for Umar Nurmagomedov even though he's been hurt and like not been able to train super good for you know the six months after the Rob Font fight I'm pretty sure that he's back in business fully healthy and I don't think his triceps going to be bothering him that much for this fight of course you always got to worry about a guy coming off of a surgery but I trust in Sanhagen you know taking the right steps and recovering well Corey Sanhagen Unless the UFC just genuinely forced him to take this matchup, I know a lot of guys have been ducking Umar. I don't know if he specifically had to take this matchup. I'm sure that he could have maybe waited for a Jose Aldo, a Henry Cejudo matchup next. But I am very confident in Sanhagen's chances, mainly because he is very confident that he can crack the Nurmagomedov code. He wants to be the first guy to truly beat one of these undefeated high level Khabib 2.0 3.0 fighters because other than Islam Makachev getting fluked early on in his career by Martins none of them have ever really lost with that being Khabib Islam and Umar one loss throughout all of their careers and it was basically just a fluke punch he wants to definitively beat one of these guys once they make it to the rankings and are high level if he's able to pull this off, it'll be legendary because it'll be the first time that someone's truly cracked the code and showed a game plan to be able to beat these guys. And, you know, in my opinion, like if I had to make a line for this fight, I would probably have Umar being a slight favorite, maybe minus 125, Corey even money, or maybe even a pick em because the experience level for Corey Sanhagen, I mean, he's fought the best of the best. Even though he lost to Aljamain Sterling, that was a long time ago. Aljamain Sterling, one of the best back-taking artists in the game. Very good submissions as well. And 
you know, that was years ago at this point, years ago at this point. And he has made it a point to make his grappling and his wrestling a lot better. We've seen that in the Cheetah Vera fight. We've seen that in the Rob Font fight. Even though he was doing it offensively there and not defensively, I definitely think he's made vast improvements in his grappling in that area of his game leading up into this matchup, giving him more confidence. It's crazy to me because Umar Namagomedov is a three to one favorite over Corey Sanhagen. Corey Sanhagen at plus 250. I mean, that is absolutely crazy odds in my opinion. I mean, Corey Sanhagen, like I said, he's fought the best of the best, lost to TJ Dillashaw, but you know, if you take into consideration the fact that Corey fucked up TJ's knee with that heel hook in the first round and he greatly outdamaged him with the striking in that round, TJ not really getting any submission offense going or anything like that. In my personal opinion, based off of just damage scoring, I think that Corey Sanhagen won that fight. And TJ Dillashaw, you know, that was before, you know, he fucked up his shoulder and Corey fucked up his knee. He was coming back off of his layoff after his suspension. He showed a decent version of himself in that matchup. So just looking back in hindsight, Corey did pretty well in that fight, even though he didn't get his hand raised. Peter Yan, of course, basically a stylistic nightmare and one of the best bantamweight fighters we've ever had. And just taking into consideration technique for technique, skill for skill, Peter Yan is up there. He can literally do everything except for maybe like super high level BJJ submissions, but no shame whatsoever in losing a decision to Peter Yan. And then since then, has been putting on good performances. Three fight win streak, Song Yudong, Cheeto Vera, and Rob Font, of course, last year this time. Somehow, it was a split decision to Cheeto Vera. I'm just going to tell you this, uh, this now, guys. The UFC, it's rigged sometimes, sometimes. Because that scorecard, you cannot tell me that that judge was not paid off or something fishy was going on there because... A blind person could not have scored that fight to Gita Vera. Insane scorecard. But, like I said, Corey Sanhagen, he trusts in his ability to crack the Nurmagomedov code. And I feel like his game plan going into this is going to be utilizing a lot of movement. Because Umar Nurmagomedov, on the feet, he likes to move around and kick at range as well. And in terms of just them going tit for tat in the striking, I definitely favor Corey Sanhagen to do more damage and land more volume, especially over the course of five rounds. Umar has never gone five rounds. He's never been in a main event. And like I've said, this is a huge step up in competition because the guys Umar has beaten, I mean, Nate Maness. Nate Maness is a pretty fucking good fighter. He's only ever lost to Tagir Lumbekov and Umar in the UFC. So, you know, very, very impressive win there from him because even though he was moving up from flyweight, we know that there's a skill gap between the divisions. Nate Maness, pretty good win. Bexat Almakan last time out in March. You know, Bexat, he's probably UFC level. Like, he's pretty good, but he's not at Umar's level, and he's not near Corey Sanhagen's level. But still, you know, he's not a complete can, but still somebody that Umar should be beating. Did get rocked really bad in that first round, but like these Dagestanis can always do. They can just zombie wrestle and eventually get their opponent to the ground, even if they're rocked as fuck. They can do it. It's second nature to them. And, you know, Ronnie Barcelos. Ronnie Barcelos was kind of getting to him with the body kicks and doing pretty good, but eventually Umar just exploded and landed a really good left body kick. And then a 2-3 put Barcelos out cold. Pretty good performance from him there. Of course, the Nate Maness fight, which is a good win. Brian Kelleher, I mean, Cody Gibson pretty much did the same thing to Brian Kelleher, so he's a can. I mean, can't really look too deeply into that win. And then, you know, his first UFC bout. So the step up in competition is going to be great here. He's never gone five rounds. I'm sure that his cardio is going to be pretty good, but he, I feel like Corey's just going to have to make him work so incredibly hard to be able to get him to the fence to be able to get the takedowns because we saw it in the Dustin Poirier versus Islam Makachev fight of course early he was able to back DP against the fence and get him down but DP he's a guy that you know he has done that throughout his career Corey Sanhagen even though he does give his back you know too much that was still a long time ago he's made improvements since then since then and I feel like he's gonna be very good at utilizing lateral movement 
being able to circle his way back into the middle of the cage, making Umar have to, you know, catch up with him in terms of the footwork. I really do feel like Corey Sanhagen is going to be able to stay off of the fence and, you know, keep the fight more in the center of the octagon where it's going to be much harder for Umar to get him down. I don't think that Corey Sanhagen is going to have like super incredible sprawls like an Aldo or a Whitaker, but I feel like if he does get down, he's going to be able to make his way back up to the feet really well. He doesn't really get held down in his fights. He's kind of like Izzy in that manner. He will get, you know, taken down and pushed up against the fence, but he won't stay there for long. And when it's in the striking, he's very good at volume striking, leg kicks, body kicks, of course, very diverse spinning attacks, flying knees, which I think will definitely be in the back of Umar's mind before he's shooting takedowns here because Corey Sanhagen can throw flying knees like it's a fucking jab for most people. I mean, it's second nature to him to just snap it right off, super explosive, super unorthodox and you know weird timing with it you're not expecting it and he just explodes out of nowhere flying knee on your chin i would absolutely love to see Corey sanhagen absolutely flying knee umar into like, in shadow realm second dimension status here in abu dhabi that would be great i'm a little bit worried about Corey sanhagen getting robbed here because you know of course Abu Dhabi, there's always going to be that biased. We saw that with uh, Nazrat Hakparast versus Jared Gordon. Jared Gordon clearly won that fight, second and third round. They gave it to Nazrat. Crazy, insane judging there. I mean, it was a close fight, but I feel like Gordon definitely edged that out. But, you know, just continuing on with the main event here, I just feel as if if Umar Namagomedov isn't able to get the grappling going early and find a submission, Corey Sanhagen's going to build confidence. He's going to continuously be like up on the strikes in terms of the significant strikes. Umar is going to be playing catch up. And I really do feel like if Corey Sanhagen can just stay off of the fence, stay in the center of the octagon and just minimize any type of damage that Umar is able to get off if he does get him down because Umar does have nasty, nasty elbows from top position we saw that against Bexat I mean he made him look like the fucking elephant man by the end of that fight with the elbows and the ground and pound from the top position and half guard very dominant grappler but he's gonna have to get him down first and I really do feel as if Corey Sanhagen is gonna be super elusive changing stances all the time it's gonna make it a lot harder for Umar to you know snatch up a single leg or something along these lines if Corey Sanhagen's constantly switching stances and, you know, Corey Sandigan, he like fights like a spastic. I mean, you never know what he's going to throw at you. You never know where he's going to go. If Corey Sandigan had more stopping power, I would actually be almost certain that he would win this fight. But, you know, unless he's landing a flying knee or a perfect head kick, you know, he's not normally going to be KOing you stiff. He can impose a lot of damage and, you know, cut you open with an elbow or something along these lines. But normally he's not putting you out with the punches or you know just a, a flush kick doesn't hit too hard but like i said the volume's going to be on his side umar you know he's going to try and go like kick for kick tit for tat at the beginning of this fight i think Corey sanhagen's going to be you know up on the significant strikes and i think this fight is definitely going to play out a lot closer than the odds suggest like i said three to one for umar plus 250 for Corey sanhagen i mean that's insane I honestly expected the line to become a lot closer from what it opened up at because it opened up at like plus 200. I was like, you know, there's no way people are going to see a plus 200 price tag on Corey Sanhagen and not want to, you know, play that because, you know, there's not really a ton of value on minus 300 for Umar for someone who's, you know, unproven, even though he does come from the Habib lineage, you know, there's always going to be questions. Is this the time that the Nurmagomedov code gets cracked? Because if anybody's going to do it, I feel like Corey Sanhagen is not only going to have the confidence to do it, but the actual ability and fight IQ to, you know, have that game plan for five rounds and do it successfully. If Umar is able to beat Corey Sanhagen, I do think he'll be able to beat Sean O'Malley because, you know, if he's able to get past the footwork, the lateral movement, the stance switches, the only thing that Sean O'Malley really has that Corey Sanhagen doesn't is you know one shot ko power in his hands you know i'd say he's a little bit better of a striker overall than Corey sanhagen but you know it's not levels 
it's mainly just the power differential between them. If Umar is able to get through Corey, I think he'll get sh through Sean as well because I do believe that Sean's going to chin Marab within two minutes. I don't think he's going to have any problems with Marab whatsoever. And Umar, you know, this is a real, this is a real test for him here. And if he passes it, I don't know if anybody at 135 is going to be able to beat him. Peter Yan might have a good chance. And, you know, it might sound a little bit crazy, but I mean, Jose Aldo doesn't get fucking taken down. Jose Aldo doesn't get fucking taken down. And if he's able to keep it on the feet, maybe he could do something against Umar. But the man's a real problem in this division. And he might rule over it with an iron fist like Islam and Khabib. But I actually trust in Corey Sanhagen to get it done. I'm going to predict Corey Sanhagen to win a... 49-46 decision. I think he'll outstrike Umar, out damage him in the first round. I believe that Umar will get the takedowns going in the second, but you know, I think that Corey Sanhagen, I think he's been working on his submission defense. I think he won't get submitted. I think he'll stay composed. And once he survives that initial grappling onslaught early, I think he'll be able to go through the last three rounds pretty confidently, outstriking Umar Namagomedov. So I put $100 on Corey Sanhagen at two to one. I might, uh, you know, put more on him depending on what the line closes at on fight night. But I'm looking forward to this fight for sure. Let me know what you guys think about this matchup in the comments. What are your predictions? I'm going to trust in the Sandman to get it done here as a big underdog against Umar. I think he can crack the Namagomedov code. I think that Umar will be successful even if he does lose this match to Corey Sanhagen. I think he'll eventually make his way up to the top because he's still young. He's still up and coming in his career, only 28 years of age. So eventually he will get that title shot, I believe, against O'Malley or, you know, Peyton Talbot, whoever's holding the belt at the time. You know, Umar versus Peyton Talbot, that, that'll be a good matchup that I, I feel like we'll get years down the line in, at Bantamweight, but going to be a good fight this weekend. I'm taking the Sandman plus 200. I think it's going to look like a pick em fight. Give me the Sandman to get it done to crack the Namagomedov code. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe. Leave a comment. I appreciate you watching all the way through and have a great rest of your day.